Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another uh, Shields Live. Uh, a little brisk out there today. Uh, this is Iowa. If you don't like the weather, wait 10 minutes. It'll probably get worse. Um, quite a change from last Wednesday when I snuck out and played that last round of golf because it was 70 degrees. But uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, we're, we're getting a little cooler. That means we're staying inside. We're sewing more. So uh, yeah, get out there, get to using those machines. we got a lot of great deals going on right now. Uh, Brothers has their um, holiday gift guide. Baby Lock's got some great promotions. Uh, I do have a couple of XP2s and Solaris 2s still left at a really nice discount. Um, but one thing I really wanted to touch on, I know I touched a couple weeks ago on bringing in the new Aero cabinets. We did finally get those in, as well as the Aero chairs. So here are the Aero chairs. Kind of tough to see. I'm going to kind of point it down so we can see them. Um, a lot of different designs on it. It's really nice. It's got the hydraulics. Um, it's got storage for you, things like that. But what we're doing with Aero right now is if you come into either of our store and test drive one of these chairs, we are going to give you a free little accessory bag. Got a cute little bag here. Um, it's got some little pockets on the side. So it doesn't cost you anything just to pop in and, and check them out. See if you like them. They really hit you in a nice spot uh, for your lumbar. Really nice chairs. So uh, nice little promotion we're going to do. Also, keep reading um, your, your emails, checking on Facebook, because we are going to be doing some specials for um, Black Friday slash Small Saturday or Small Business this Saturday. Saturday. So, um, But a lot of great things coming out. We are uh, fully stocked now on a lot of things. So if you're looking for machines, accessories, things like that, um, come in and and or check it out on the, the website. But again, thanks for joining us, and I will pass it on to Jan. Catch you later. Thanks, Tim. Hi, everybody. Okay, so we're going to do a little sewing today. You know, the last week it was fun. Just a second here. I got to get back to my comments. Give me a second. Get back to my comments here. Okay, so, um, oh, yeah, I love the little chair. So Judy said she loves her little chair, and they've redone the chairs. The old original chairs were not hydraulic, so these, you know, move up and down. So the old ones were just stationary, one, one height, and I've, I even love the old ones, and so these new ones are really, really cool. So anyway, so um, so last week we, we worked in IQ Designer and Design Center to make um, a design for this little pillow, this little fall pillow. So I thought, well, let's just have some fun this week. And, you know, we haven't done any embroidery for a while. So I thought, you know what, we're just going to embroider this fun little pillow. And I'm going to show you how I did it. The instructions um, for the, you know, to make it an IQ designer and also the instructions for the sewing and the cutting and everything are, um, I put a link to the Dropbox on the video from last week. And I, I'll put it on again this week, just so you know. And then um, it's also, if you're in Sew Along with Jan, um, if you're in in the Sew Along with Jan Facebook page, it's on in the first, <laughs> the first post is the Dropbox post. It's under the sewing and embroidery. So you can always go in there and get it as well. And then I will, for those of you who are watching on YouTube, I will go ahead and I will put a link underneath the video in the description to the the design. So I actually gave everybody the PES file. So when you make it in IQ Designer Design Center, it's actually in a different file. Um, and so then when you, um, so I created it, I, I converted it over into a PES file so that everybody could sew it. And you do have to have an AP by 12 hoop, just so you know. So those of you with the little smaller hoops, this one's not gonna work for you because the panel is too wide and too long, but um, this is a 12 by 12 pillow, okay? So we're gonna stitch this out today. I'm just gonna show you how to stitch it out. I thought it'd be fun. We'll talk a little bit about um, stabilizer and the batting and different things too. So, all right, so let me go ahead and switch over the camera here. I even got the banner turned out. I was proud of myself. So let me switch this over. And my microphone. Okay, so the last page, hi, Clara. So the last page of the instructions, for those of you who downloaded the instructions to learn how to make the fall pillow in Design Center or IQ Designer, 
The last page is the sewing instructions. So let's go over the cutting a little bit first. So we're going to do, we need a center panel and the side panels. You need um, two 10 by 14 inch pieces of fabric in, in fabric and in batting. So my base fabric was, I got to find it here. Here it is. So my base fabric is this kind of creamy tan color. Okay. So I have two pieces that are 10 by 14. All right. Have those cut. And then I cut two pieces of batting the same size. Okay. So I have two pieces of batting and I like to use Hobbs 80-20 batting. So this is my, and it's a little poofier. So it makes it, it makes it have just a little bit of poof to it. So I like that. So I got those two. And then you need two backs that are 12 and a quarter by 16. So, and then with the 16 inch way, I'm going to pull this back just a little bit. I have folded them in half, the 16 inch width, you know, this is the 16 inch width here. And I folded them in half with the wrong sides together and then pressed them. So these, these are going to be an envelope back that I've just got a double back. Okay. So it makes it real easy. Now we may possibly have to trim the back off just a little bit when we go to um, sew it together because every now and then they're, they're just a little long, even at 10, 12 and a quarter. So uh, we may trim them when we get there. So I've got both of those then pressed with the wrong size together. Okay. So they, they're about eight inches this way. Okay. So we got the two backs. So I've got, and I've not got some pretty fall colors. All right. And then we're going to need a piece of no shell mesh stabilizer. So what I've done is I've just hooped my no show mesh in my stabilizer in, in my hoop. That's all I've got. And this is an eight by 12 hoop. Okay. That's all I've got in my hoop. Now I am going to talk just a little bit about, we've been having some questions about bobbin cases and stuff again. I like to use pre-wound bobbins in my machine. So I have my pre-wound bobbin in here. And this is my um, brother 52 VM 5200. It's my essence. And I do have the tight bobbin case in there, the one with the little blue dot in it, for my pre-wound bobbins. Okay, so you, I do need to switch my bobbin case out. I will switch the bobbin case back to the standard one, which has like a green screw out here. I will switch it back when we go to sew here in a little bit. Okay, but I've got my tight bobbin case in for my pre-wound bobbin. All right, so I will we'll go through that again when I go to switch the bobbin cases out. So I've got my pre-wound in there. <clears throat> and put this in here. Okay. And I have already have my stabilizer hooped in my hoop here. And it's only it's only the the no show mesh that's in the in the hoop. Now, there are some you could do this if you want. Now, normally when I've made these pillows in the past, I don't use any shape flex on the back of the fabric. You can if you want. A lot of the Kimberbell um, projects we do um, have uh, the shape flex ironed on the back of the fabric. But when I use um, batting, so often I don't because the batting kind of holds the fabric in place. So I'm not going to use any, um, any shape flex on the back of my fabric this time. I just have just the fabric. Okay. All right. So. What I'm going to do to start, we're going to do the, the, the center panel first. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and hit embroidery edit on my machine. I have one of the older ones, so I have to hit embroidery edit. And then I'm going to go to my USB and I'm going to bring in the center panel, which is this one here. Okay. It's pretty much going to fill my whole frame. And remember when we saved it last week, we had the basting line. So the first thing it's going to sew is the basting line. I'm going to sew that in my gold because the second thing that's going to sew are the decorative fills at the top and the bottom. So I'm just going to sew the basting line in that gold also. And then the last thing that we'll sew is my um, little fall design in the center, my little red work design. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and set this and hit it. Okay. So this is going to be, it's about, it's about 14 minutes. It's about nine, 9,000, a little over 9,000 stitches. Okay. All right. So let's put this in here. And then the next step is going to be to place my batting, one of my pieces of batting, because you're going to use one for the side panels. So I can't, I can hold up my batting. 
you're going to lay my batting in the hoop and the, and the size that i gave you pretty much you know covers the whole hoop so you, you can easily get it centered so i'm just going to lay my batting in there and then i'm going to lay my piece of fabric right side up and this is the one i have to make sure i check it because it's very easy to get it upside down okay and i've got my gold thread in the needle so i've got embroidery thread my gold embroidery thread in the needle and i've got my pre-wound bobbin in the in the tight or the blue dot bobbin case in the bobbin okay okay so i've got this all smoothed out make sure you smooth it out and and when you smooth this out and even though i don't have the shape flex on it the batting just kind of holds the fabric so i i use shape flex a lot but i just didn't on this project because i thought it made it a little bit softer okay so the first step is going to be that basting line so we're going to base this all down to the hoop so i'm just going to kind of smooth it out just watch your hands make sure that it's all smooth in here and i love this batting because it just it's just a little bit it's got a little bit of polyester in it and so it's just got a little bit more loft so it makes these all really pretty because it gives it just a little bit of poofy okay so it's going around the outside edge I thought this would be a fun project for this afternoon. It's kind of snowy out. We need to be doing some fun sewing. And this is very, very easy. Okay, so I make sure I got my, yep, I got my fabric right side up. And then step number two is going to be those pretty decorative stitches. So it's gonna do the top and the bottom panel first. So off it goes. Now this is, um, This one was done on the Luminaire, so, or the um, Baby Lock um, Solaris. So these are not gonna be quite as heavy. So if you happen to do this on the Dream Machine or the Stellaire, you may find that this decorative spill is just a little heavier on your machine because I chose the lighter version. Um, but that's one thing that that machine, those two machines have that some of the machines don't is the ability to make this decorative stitch a little less heavy and it still goes back and forth on itself it's just the nature of the way it sews but i really think these decorative fills stitch out really nicely on the on the mechanics i can sure i can still see my comments okay so how many people are sewing are people sewing with me this afternoon This is a fun project. I, I enjoyed these pillows. And we did this in a class quite a few years ago and uh, designed it all and then sewed it. It was really fun. And designing in Design Center and IP Design was really fun. Is Lisa's sewing cool? I really like this stitch too. This is one of my favorite ones. And and Clara, you'll have this in your in your big machine. And I think this one was in the dream machine too. It was in one of the updates, as I remember. So you probably have it in both of your machines. Some people may not have had this one. Depends on the machine, uh, which decorative fills are in each machine. So it varies a little bit. But you can see, I haven't got any shape flex on the back of this, and it still looks real nice. I mean, I'll show you this one. And I don't think it looks wrinkly at all. It just gives it a little bit of a softer look to it. And it doesn't look wrinkly. You're not, you don't have a ton of stitches in this. That's why I chose not to put the shape flex on. But um, if you have a lot more stitches, it actually would be probably better with the shape flex. But this is just not a ton of stitches. And the batting actually acts as a stabilizer. So that's why you really don't need very much. All right, so then it's going to go down and go along the bottom, the side here. And remember, we put the little outline on so that it would do the little line there. Well, it has to go and get the little, the little pieces on the side. But 
but I really like the way this stitched out. When I stitched this one out, I noticed that also from my original pattern that there was quite a difference in the way it's stitched. And I think I've got my original one here somewhere. I, I can show you just a second and see if I can find it. Because I've noticed that things look different when you scan them compared to when you use, like we use, you know, the design off of the computer, well, on a, well, off of the stick. And this is the original one. So I'll hold it up so you can kind of see it. This is the original one that I scanned. Okay. And I did this one a couple of years ago, several years ago when we did this. And I scanned this in. And then this is the one that I used, you know, off of the USB last week. And I really think things look much cleaner. I used the same exact settings on them. And I've, I've been, so I'm kind of a, I really like the, um, because I download a lot of like pictures and stuff on off the internet, and then the the digital copies often are very, very clean, and so I just put those on the stick and take them right to the machine. The other way you can do it. Oh, second here, my camera decided it's not going to be in focus. It'll 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 focus out here in a minute. It's hard when it, it's watching things move. <laughs> The second here, I'll, I'll poke it up this way so it doesn't have to see it moving, and then it should focus. There it goes. There we go. When when the hoop moves, it, it makes it hard for it to learn to focus again. So um, you can also send with with the Stellaire's Altairs, the um, the. Um, Solaris and the luminaires, you can also send design, you can send pictures, like take a picture with your camera on your phone. And then with that app, you can send the pictures to the machine. But my camera on my uh, phone is not all that wonderful. So I've always felt that using the USB stick and, you know, sometimes I'll scan it on my computer instead. And my, my scanner is really good. So that seems to work out a little bit better for me. So I thought this is, it's, I love that stitch. You like that one too, Clara? I've always liked this one. I've got this machine running pretty quick. So if you're sewing along, it may, you may not be sewing as fast as I am. This one sews pretty fast. Hoping that I'm not going to hit the, back panel back there. I may have to move my machine out a little bit. I'm against the wall. You have to be careful with these long hoops <laughs> to make sure you're far enough away from the wall so you don't wonk the wall with your hoop. There we go. All right. So there's our top and bottom panels. Okay. And now we're going to do the center panel here. So I'm going to switch over and I use kind of a wine colored thread. This is, um, oh, this is deep gold. This is my old brother, deep gold. It's 214. This is Winnie the Pooh color. I thought that was pretty with my, with my background. And then I'm going to go back to the wine color. And this is wine 1022. And these are brother colors. You can make it any color. I just kind of matched my, my fabric. So I just picked some colors that went well with this. So the gold went well and and this wine color was real nice with it. So, all right. So we'll go ahead and switch the color. And now we're going to do the little, this is the little um, design that we created, the little red work design. And it sews out real nicely. I hadn't... Um, I wanted to stitch out the new version of this from the old one before I gave you the PES files to make sure everything stitched okay. So, yeah, I really like it. There's a lot of really pretty um, decorative um, stitches in the machine. Um, so, like the Solaris and the um, Luminaires have a lot of designs. I mean, there's probably 40 or more designs in each of those now. So there's a lot of really pretty decorative stitches. I, I haven't used them all yet. I mean, I use them 
quite often, but I have I don't think I've ever used every single one of them yet. And I like to use them for quilting too. So this is going to be more like a red work design. And if we wanted to, we could have done this with an outline and then done a, we could have filled all of these also. So that would be another way to do this is you choose an outline and do an outline for your, your design. But then see, we could have filled this all with color. So we could have gone in to that design and filled each one of these areas with stitches or with a decorative stitch. So that would have been really pretty too. We could have done like a decorative stitch in each one of these. Those would have been really pretty. So we may try that. We may try another something with uh, Design Center and do that. So you've done some filling because you can fill with just plain um, solid fills, like, you know, like standard fills, but then you can also use all those decorative stitches too for the fills and it makes it really pretty. Right. This is looking nice. They 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 sew kind of interestingly. Um, the machine picks the way it's going to sew, and um, so I never know exactly how it's going to work <laughs> when I do these. So every time you do it, it's different. But I really like. So I did make the stitches a little shorter um, on this one. Actually, I I used the same settings on the other one, but the, the stitches are a little tighter looking on this newer version so this is the one i gave everybody the pes file of and this machine um, doesn't read the machine format that the machine produces this one is an older one so it reads phc and my uh, luminaire produces a phx file so i had to make this one a, a PES, you know our standard file for this machine to read it But I really like red work. But I thought it'd be fun just to sew today. We haven't sewn for a while and done something just for fun. And I thought I wanted to do this design in October, but I got a little waylaid. So um, I'm so along with Jan. So I thought, well, we'll just do it now. So then we learned how to make our design and I have a number 11 embroidery needle in. I think this this one happens to be a Schmetz. Um, I have Schmetz needles here. Um, I use I use organs most of the time, but I do have Schmetz as well, so both are really good. But this one, I think I think I had a couple packages of Schmetz needles here. All right, so it's doing the leaves. So what do you think? I think it's turning out really good and we're just going to leave this stabilizer in i'm going to trim so the next step we'll do is we're going to take when we take this out of the hoop i'm going to trim a quarter of an inch all the way around the center panel oh i'm not working on anything right now clara i've got i'm a little bit i'm a little bit busy right now so i would like to do a. we did a quilt last year in november yeah, we did um, May Your Days Be Very and Bright. So I hope to do another quilt, but it probably won't be until over the summer. I like to, I like designing quilts, but it, it takes a lot of time to get all the videos done and everything. So these are fun though to do because these these don't take me as long and then we can just have a short class to do these. May Your Days Be Merry and Bright, though, is, is really pretty, and it was fun. It was really a fun, and I learned a lot doing that one. So it's got one more leaf to do, and then it's going to be the pumpkin. I think it's kind of got the pumpkin inside, in with the leaves here. Yep. And remember, we, we picked up like a triple stitch, and that's what it's doing. I thought this was kind of a neat design. So 
So this one was, yeah, this one was about 9,000 stitches, a little over 9,000 stitches for the whole thing. That was including the decorative stitches. So it doesn't take too long. So how many people actually made their own design? How many people did went in and designed this in your design center or IQ designer? Did you do that? It's a lot of fun to learn to do it. I've learned a lot by playing with it. And the best thing to do is just go in and play with things and try to figure things out. I've learned a lot by just, just poking the buttons and making it work. And, and I've learned too that a lot of the stuff, as I've worked with it more, it's I can do a lot of stuff like on the embroidery side of it, not in design center per se, but in, you know, with the machine. And so I, I go out of design center, IQ designer and work in the machine area a little bit. And for like, you know, doing the different, like if I want to duplicate and stuff like that. So um, I've just learned of some little quick things to do with it. And it really works great. But the, um, so it really fills that eight by 12 hoop. Basically the whole thing. Not ready to have a pumpkin here. Going back and doing all the little triple stitches now. And it often does like a, a underlay of just a single stitch to move around the different move move around the design. I think it's amazing how the machine decides how to sew it. Because it, it does it for you. You know, you don't have to tell it how to sew it. It just does it. All right, so it's going around the leaves. I like this red color. It's turned out pretty. Okay, so next week is going to be the day before Thanksgiving. So we're not going to have a shield live that day. Um, so because we'll be preparing for Thanksgiving and so on. So then we'll come back the, the last week of November, right after Thanksgiving. And I'm going to try to get, hopefully, I'll be able to get the um, edge to edge quilting on the, the new um, upgrade three for the luminaires and the Solarises. I'm hoping to do the edge to edge quilting. Um, function, that new function. It works a lot like the border one that we did a few weeks ago. And so I'm planning on doing that one after Thanksgiving. So I, then I'll have a little time to play with it. I need to get some fabric um, sandwiched up so I can play with it a little bit. But it looks pretty straightforward. It looks like it works pretty much the same as the border function does. All right, so it's got the A to do. Then we're about done, and then we'll put in the the we'll put in the paint side panels. All right, so there's the outline. So we've got to do the inside of the A yet. And the side panels are going to be basically done the same way, but there's no red work on those. They're just going to be the pretty decorative panel on the sides. All right, I think that's it. All right, so there is the center panel. Look at there. Okay, so I'm going to pull this out. Okay, and I'm going to take it out of the hoop. So at this point, I'm going to take it out of the hoop, and we're going to hoop the hoop up again. 
And while the side panels are stitching, I'm going to run over and I'm going to trim this. Let me get my other piece of stabilizer here. Where did I lay it? Oh, I laid something on top of it just a second here. I'm always laying stuff on top of my stabilizer. This hoop's big enough. I'm gonna I'm gonna hoop from over here. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Also gonna check to make sure I have enough bobbin thread in here. And I'm going to go ahead and I've got my my no show mesh and my eight by twelve hoop again. And now we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna switch back to the gold thread. So that's the color I want my side panels to be in. All right, so we'll get those, get the gold in here, and we're going to do the same thing for the side panels that we did. Whoops. i got to get my design, so I'm going to go get my other design here. Get the side panel design, so I'll get rid of this one. Go back into embroidery edit. And we'll get the side panels right here. We're going to set them. So here, we remember, we had both of them. And we also put the ba the basting stitch around these. So it's just going to baste around the outside edges of them. So I'm just going to leave my gold thread in for that. And we're going to do the same thing for these. Is we're going to lay our batting in first. Oops, second here. Like I got stuff all over it. I'm gonna lay this in first, and then we're gonna lay the fabric in on top. And I gotta make sure I get it right side up. Okay, lay this one in right, right side up on top of the batting and get it smoothed out. And then we're gonna go ahead and sew out the first step, which will be that basting stitch. Okay, make sure I got everything down here. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of hold this so that nothing scooches on me. And I do those basting stitches. If you have a little trouble with your basting stitches, they're really long. You know, the basting stitches in the machine are really, really long. If you ever have trouble getting them to catch at the beginning, did you notice how I kind of had my hand just kind of, um, kind of holding it there? If you put a little pressure on it, it seems like it allows it to tie the knot better because these stitches are really, really long. And this machine's always done a real good job with the basting stitches. So, oh, hi, Connie. All right. So now we're ready to do our two decorative panels. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to let this run. Okay. And what I'm going to be doing in the meantime for just a moment is I'm going to take this over to my cutting table and I'll show you quick. I'm going to take this over to my cutting table and I'm going to trim this a quarter of an inch from the basting line all the way around the outside edge. Okay, so I'm just going to cut a quarter of an inch, cut a quarter inch and leave a little seam allowance there. Okay, so I'll let you watch this stitch while I go do that real quick. Hopefully if it lets it, come on, focus. A second, I'm going to tip it up again. Let it focus. There we go. It doesn't like to focus on a moving target very well. There we go. All right, so you watch the side panels and I'm going to go trim these real quick. And I just trimmed a quarter of an inch away, okay? And if you, when you go to put this together, if you can see these little basting stitches just a little bit, they're real, 
they're real long. And if you want to right now, you can just take a seam ripper and just pull them out. I sometimes do on the side panel just because sometimes these want to show a little bit, but they're really loose stitches, so it's easy to get them out, okay? So you can just pull these out on these little side panels here. Because I know I did that with mine because it, it just wanted to show a little bit on the edges here. So I just went ahead and pulled it out because it was so loose, you know. The top and the bottom don't usually show, so so I'll go ahead and pull these out. I don't have my seam ripper out, so I'm just going to use my scissors to pull them out. But I've got it all trimmed. Ready to be sewn together, and we'll sew it together even. Hi, Shannon. Everybody's late today. That's okay. You can always watch the video later. On Connie, this design was one that I did in the um, last week in the class that I have given everyone. So you can go to um, the, there's a couple of places you can get it. I've got the link for it. Um, on the Shield Sewing Center um, Facebook page, it's underneath the um, it's underneath the video from last week because we learned how to produce this in Design Center or IT Designer, and then um, also you can get it on um, the Facebook page. Um, so along with Jan, under the first the first post is always where the all the Dropbox stuff is. And the link is in there for it. It's just called Fall IQ Designer Design Center I Fall Pillow is what it is. All right, so we're getting the other one. So it's going to do the other little side panel. And then we'll trim these too. So I did give everybody the design. So yes, you can go get it and download it from the, the Dropbox. And I'll also put it, if you're watching on YouTube, I'll put it under the description are in the description under the video, the Dropbox link again. So if you need, if you could, didn't find it from last week, you can get it. I'm sorry you aren't feeling well, Shannon. That's too bad. It's kind of cold here. I'm, I'm, I was a little shocked at how cold it got. <laughs> how quickly, like Tim said, it was 70 degrees last Wednesday. A week ago today, it was 70 degrees, and today it's like 30. So, and it's snowing. It was still snowing when I looked at it a little while ago. All right, so it's running down the second panel here. And you can see it did the little line along the inside of the panel, so it has a nice line all the way around it. And then we're going to sew these on each side of our fall section so that we have a pillow that's 12 inches square. This is one of those spools of thread that I keep thinking it's never going to get, it's never going to end because I've had it forever and it's just a little bit left on it, but it keeps going and going. But these are really fun to make. I like making these little pillows. These are a 12 by 12 pillow. So I actually have a, t a, a pillow form. Um, I usually buy my pillow forms, um, you can make them of course, if you, if you cut it like 12 and a half by 12 and a half, and then sew around about a quarter of an inch seam and then stuff it. But I, I have a tendency to go to um, Hobby Lobby is a good place to get um, pillow forms, and they often have them on sale, so I got this one at Hobby Lobby. So I didn't have to make this one. I make most of the bench buddies, the little ones, because they're a little easier to go to do. Uh, they're smaller, so they don't take as long as these little bigger ones do. And I almost always make my pillow form, you know, for those bench pillows, those great big huge ones, because it's hard to find the pillow forms, so I usually make those. 
And then I'm going to trim these real quick, and then we're going to switch over and do a little bit of sewing today. Looking good. So it doesn't take long. This takes eight minutes, and the other one took like 15. So, you know, it doesn't take long to stitch these little pillows out, and you can sew them together real quick and make lots of gifts with them. And then the other one that, that we did before was the uh, Love You Luke to the Moon and Back one. So that one's up there on the Dropbox, too, if you want to do a second one of these pillows. So. All right, so it's going to go around the outside edge. And you may notice that some, sometimes the little basting stitch will show just a little bit, but if you if it shows it when you stitch, you can always um, pull it out. All right. So there's our two side panels. Now the reason I left them a little ways apart is that we we needed to have plenty of room to have a little seam allowance in there. See? Okay. So give me a second, and I'm going to go trim these, and then we'll go we'll switch over and do some sewing. So we can stitch this together, and I can show you that envelope back. I'm going to take it out of the hoop. Okay, so here are the two side panels. I did the same thing. I just trimmed quarter of an inch all the way around the basting, okay? Makes it real easy. So that's the two side panels, and then here's our center panel. Look, oops, I gotta get my pins. Got to get the pins out. There we go. Okay, so now we're gonna switch over and we're gonna do a little sewing. So give me a second here and we'll switch my foot. I'm gonna go back to the home page here and I'm going to put my foot controller in and I'm going to switch my foot. So here's my, I'm going to use my J foot for the sewing. So we're just going to take the embroidery foot off. And this is one that has the little tail in the back that plugs in. So I have to unplug the back. This one has a little laser light in it. So it's one of these ones with the tail. And then we're going to put the J foot on. Okay, got my shank and my J foot. Now remember we talked earlier that we had to put in the tight bobbin case for this pre-wound bobbin because the, the thread's fairly thin. So I'm going to take my pre-wound embroidery bobbin out. And now I want to change my bobbin case because I need to sew and I've have I have um wound my own bobbin and this is a Pima cotton thread that I'm going to use. So I'm going to take this tight one out. So here's my tight bobbin case with the blue dot. I'm going to take that one out and I'm going to put in the standard bobbin case, which is the one that's set for your regular sewing thread. And it has kind of, you can't really see it very well on the screen, but it has kind of a green screw right here. Okay. So that one's going to go into the machine now. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and put in, whoops, got to put the little gray thing back on. And we're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and put my, my Pima cotton thread into the bobbin case. All right, and then we're going to switch the top thread to the same matching thread. And I usually sew these together with cotton thread. You can use polyester thread too, that's just fine. Whatever you have that matches. This is a nice cream color thread. 
matches my base fabric real well. But I wanted to show you my little trick. So I've always had trouble, you know, when I've done like these in the hoop um, things, <laughs> getting them not to show the little um, lines on the outside. So I'm going to go to sewing now on my machine. Okay. And I'm going to go to the Q tab. Now this machine will allow me to sew with my embroidery unit on. So I'm going to go down here to my Q tab. And I'm going to use actually Q01, which is my net, is my middle or my center needle position. And I'm going to, oops here, pin my two side panels. Of course, I have to drop them on the floor a couple times. I'm going to pin my two side panels on. Yes, Connie, you really do. If you're using um, pre-wound bobbins, the, the, the standard bobbin cases really are not tight enough for those pre-wound bobbins. So yes, uh, when you, when you um, use the pre-wounds, you need to use that tight bobbin case because they're made for that, that thinner thread and they're tighter. So your tension is going to be a lot better. So yes, you do. Um, and then when you use a bobbin that you've wound yourself, like with regular sewing thread, or with like, like to say you're making lace and you have embroidery thread in the bobbin, then you need to be using the standard one that I just put in, the one with the kind of green screw on the outside. Now I did do a video about the bobbin cases and bobbin thread here um, a couple of months ago, and it's also on YouTube under Shields Live, and it's also on the Shield Sewing Center Facebook page. So that would be another one that you might want to watch. It explains it more in detail. Okay, so we're just going to line up our seams here, and I'm going to pin these on. So the reason I put my needle in the center, there's a little trick that I've gotten with these in the hoop. A lot of these in the hoop designs, you don't have like a basting stitch around the outside or something, these in the hoop things. And I was always having trouble with like the that that basting line showing in my seam, and I don't like that. <laughs> So if you just do a standard quarter inch seam, it may show. Okay, but you should have gotten the tight bobbin case that has like a purple or pur you, most of them have purple, some have pink dots um, in the center. Those came with your machine. But what I'm going to do is you can see where that basting line is right here. And I'm going to leave my needle in the center needle position and I'm going to sew just to the left of that line. And it may be just a little more than a quarter of an inch, but I don't want that line to show in my stitching. Okay. So that's how, that's how I do this is I always just watch this line and I put the little mark on my foot just on the left of it, on the inside of it, so that I don't get that line showing. And if we do still have the line showing, I'll show you a way we can fix that. All right. So we're going to go, and I am going to back up a, a little bit. There we go pull those pins out as I'm going here. Okay, so I've got my needle just on the left hand side of that basting stitch. Because so I'm trying to avoid that. Yes, if you are winding the brother or the baby lock um, bobbin thread, you do not need to change your bobbin case. It's only for the pre-wounds. So if you are if you are using you're winding your own bobbins, brother or baby lock bobbin thread, you do not need to change your bobbin case. And that's also in that that other video I just went into more detail. So that is correct. Whoever asked that question, if you're winding your own bobbins, you do not need to wind your bob or change your bobbin case. I I just don't like to wind bobbins. I'm very lazy. Okay. So there is that side. Now let's take a look at it because if I miss something, you know, if I had a little bit of basting showing, I can fix that. Okay. That looks pretty good. Now give me just a second. I forgot to, I got, forgot to plug in my iron because I'm going to iron this out a little bit. Let me just plug this in quick. It's right next to me, but I just forgot. I always forget something when I'm doing this. Uh, 
so no, so that is so so uh i can't see something embroidery fisby chris embroidery asked that question about the winding and so if you are using finishing touch or the brother bobbin thread you do not have to change out your bobbin case you can just wind your own bobbins if that's what you're doing i do so much embroidery that it's just so it, it's just so hard for me to wind bobbins because that's all i get done <laughs> is winding bobbins so it is nice that the machines a lot of them have you know so I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to I'm going to make sure I'm just on the inside of my basting stitch here, just to the left of it. That's why I like to sew with the needle in the center because I find it easier for me to see it than with sewing with a quarter inch piecing stitch. Okay, so we're going to go there. Let me get this one. Get it lined up. It's hard to sew with a camera under your arm. Where do you buy your pre-wound bobbins and what type of thread is on them? I use NEB pre-wound bobbins. We sell them at the store, Nancy. We have them at the store, so you can buy them in packages of six. You can buy them by the box. You can buy as many as you want. But that's the ones that I've been using, and it is a um, polyester filament bobbin thread number 60. So I've been using these for many, many years. Okay, so let's see how I did on this one. So if you miss something, so I didn't happen to miss this time, believe it or not. So what I do is if I happen to miss and I can see some of my basting, what I do is whatever side I'm seeing, what size bobbins. Okay, so there are pre-wound bobbins. Filtech makes a pre-wound bobbin that is a class 15. And those are okay, but you still have to use the tight bobbin case. My pre-wound bobbins are the L bobbins. So they're the skinnier ones. So they give you a little post with your machine too. It's a little post that has, it's like a little, it looks like about the size of a dime or a nickel. And it has a little post on it. And then that raises the bobbin up in the bobbin case. So you can use it with those L's, minor L's. Okay. Um, I'm lazy, so I don't always put it in. But you have to be careful because your bobbin your bobbin sensor doesn't always work with that little skinny bobbin okay but if you happen to see a little bit of your basting on one side or the other so whatever side it's showing on turn it over like if it's showing on this side make sure you're sewing on this side if it's on this side turn it over and sew on that side and you can just stitch down again to get rid of um, yes, Marsha, that is correct. You can use the L's in there, but you, you might need to use your little post, okay? Um, but, and that's also in that other video, Marsha. So if you haven't seen that video on Shields Live about the bobbin thread and the bobbin cases, I, I recommend it because I did went through everything in much more detail, okay? So that way, if I'm sh seeing one of my basting stitches on this side, then I can turn it over and just stitch down it again. And that way, you don't have any of those ugly things on your pretty pillow. So we might have something on the sides that we can show too. Okay, so this looks pretty good. And I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm just going to open the seams up. I'm going to open these up and just press them down real quick so that they're easier to get into the pillow. Okay, so we'll do the back, the backs now. All right, let's see how I can get these pressed. This is a steamy iron. All right. Got one of them done. Just a second here. Makes it easier when I go to put it together if it's flatter. That's the one thing. That's about the only time I iron. I don't like to iron. <laughs> I have to iron when I'm sewing. I can get it opened up here. There it goes.
but I am kind of picky about my my um, pre wound bobbins. There's only a couple that I would recommend, and and the Filtech class 15s are fine. Those work fine, but you do have to use the tight bobbin case, and the L N E B are fine, and we carry the N E Bs in the store, so those those work just fine. But you do have to use the tight bobbin case for them. All right, so there's our front panel. What do you think? So now we're going to put our backing on. Now we may have to trim the backing off. So let's take a look. I might have to just just trim it a little bit. So let's see. So what I do is I lay this down and I put the raw edges together. So the fold is going to be in. This is the this is the finished edge where the fold is and the raw edges are going to be on the outside. And I like to put my um I like to put my opening up and down. You can also do it horizontally if you prefer that. So whichever works for you. But I think I might possibly need to trim this off about a quarter of an inch. We'll see. Yeah, see, I'm going to have to turn it, trim it off just a, just a little bit. So I think I'm going to trim it off to yeah about a quarter of an inch. Okay, so let me go trim these backs off. I've had to do that with these. So they were a little long. Let's try this now. I think it'll work better now. Okay, so I've got my raw edges together. I've got the fold in the center. Let's see, I think these would be better. Oh yeah, those are much better. So we're gonna just gonna pin these on. I like to start on the raw ed on like the corners on the raw edges here. And this is an envelope back. So these are fun. This is a, a different way of doing envelope backs. So these are like doubled on the back. It just gives the pillow a little bit more um, body on the back. When you when you fold the fabric it does take quite a lot more fabric though than just doing a hem you know on the inside so sometimes i do them this way and sometimes i do them with the um with the hem but this works just fine okay so we'll get those started and then i'm going to put the other one on do the same thing okay so i'm going to put my raw edges together the folds are going to be on the inside so get these corners and yeah that quarter of an inch came, um, coming off really helped get them yeah they're much more even now so just be aware you might have to trim your backs off about a quarter of an inch all right so we got that now there's always going to be this little you know overlap where the two little pieces overlap and it's real important that we know where that is because I when I first started doing these, I always had so much trouble um, with my pillows ripping there, you know, when you're trying to get the pillow form in and out. So I learned a little trick and I'll show you my little trick here and we're going to do that. We're going to stitch over that like three times so that we don't have that little ripping problem. Okay, so I like to put a pin where each end is so that I know where I have to do that. Okay, so we're going to do this one. Let me get this one right here. So this is the one end where the overlap is. And then the other one is right. I've got to find it here. There it is. Right there. So I'll put the pins there. And I like to start there also so that I know exactly where I'm going to be. Now this one I am going to switch over and use my... Uh, my quarter inch piecing stitch okay but I want this to be a full quarter inch so I'll show you how I'm going to do that I'm going to go ahead and hit Q02 okay and then when I go to use this when I want a full quarter inch I'm going to make sure that I can see the edge of my fabric when I lay it along the edge of my foot then I know I've got a full quarter inch okay so I'm going to drop my needle and we're going to sew over this is where that that overlap is so i'm going to sew over that overlap and see i can just see the edge of my fabric okay and when i get to this other pin here i'm going to hit my reverse button and we're going to sew back over it okay so just take your time you can keep it straight 
So I'm going to sew right back over what we just sewed. All the way back to the other side, the other pin, okay? And then I'm going to sew back over it again. So then we have like, and you could use a triple stitch here, but I've always found that if I do the backup, it seems like it holds really well, okay? And again, I'm watching my side so I can just see my edge. And then I have a full quarter inch seam here. Okay, then I'm gonna turn the corner. Now I've also got my pivot feature on. Did you notice that my foot goes up? So to do that, most of the machines, it's right here, this little, this little button with the, with the, looks like a foot with the needle through it. I love the pivot feature because then I don't have to touch so many buttons when I'm going around corners and stuff. So we're gonna go down this side. Again, I'm watching to make sure I have my full quarter inch. Take the pins out here as we go. Down here to the corner. And I've got my pivot on, so I can just get down to my about my quarter inch and pivot around. Okay. Make sure I got everything lined up here just a second. There we go. Now we're getting close to one of those overlaps again because we're on the other side of the pillow. So here's the overlap with this pin. Now I am going to leave that in a very carefully go over it because I want to know where it's, it is when I back up. So we're going to go over it to this other pin over here where the overlap is. Then we're going to back up over that overlap. That way I know. And you notice I'm not going very fast, so I can make sure I got it straight. And then I'm going to go back over it again. Give it strength. There we go. Now I can take the pin out. Down here to the corner. Turn the corner. All right. Bit of another pin here. Just a second. I think we're getting. A little crooked here. There we go. I love envelope backs because it makes the pillow go together real quick. All right, I'm gonna go around the last corner. We're almost there. And I'll show you grandma's little trick. All right, we're getting towards right where we started. I'm going to go ahead and tie off. All right, and cut. So now we've got all the way around. And if you give me just a second here, I got to find my Floriani tool. I thought I had it out, but I must have stuck it back in there. Stuck it back in my sewing box. All right. So here is our envelope back. So, of course, with envelope backs, we turn them through the envelope. The opening in the back. Pull this back a little bit. I'm just going to pull this open and then we'll, I'm going to show you grandma's little trick. So you don't want to trim through these corners because if you trim through the corner, you're going to go, I'm, I'm going to guarantee you, you're going to poke a hole right through it. So what I do is I take my first finger and I slip it into the little corner here. Okay. A lot of you have seen this before. And I get, take my thumb and I pull the seam allowance down to the seam line. And I push it into the seam line and I create that corner right in the corner, hold it with my thumb and turn it right side out. And then you're going to get a beautiful corner. And we're going to do that with all four of them. And then we'll use our little Floriani tool to, to finish them. Okay, so I'm making the corner and I'm turning it. There's one side. Do the other side here. Okay, bring this down. And push it in and hold it in the corner and push the little corner out and then we can finish them up with that little tool that's one of my favorite tools ever is this floriani point turning tool okay so we'll get it turned right side out and take my tool now this is my point turner we have these on the website too shieldsewingcenter.com and it has the little ball end Okay, so what I'm going to do is take that little ball in now and I'm just going to finish up my corners. 
and make them nice and straight. And see that all of that bulk is still in there because we folded it down. And it really looks makes the corners look nice and you don't take the chance of poking a huge hole in them. Because if I trim them out, I almost every time poke a hole. So grandma showed me this years ago when I was a little girl <laughs> about how to do this. There you go. We've got these beautiful crisp corners now. So there's our pillow. Doesn't that look nice? I'm just going to finger press it a little bit on the edges. I don't usually press them too much. I just kind of finger press them on the edges because then I'm just going to put the pillow form in. It looks really good. All right. So let me get my these out of the way. Let me get my pillow form. And we're almost done. So here's my pillow form. Now, it does always have these long tags on here. So I usually pull these off. I like to trim them off. They're just so, they're so long that they, that they show in the, in the covers. All right, so we'll put this in here. I'm gonna slip this in one side. This is a 12 by 12 um, pillow form. And I, like I said, I think I got these at Hobby Lobby. These are the ones, let me look at it. Yeah, this is the one that came from Hobby Lobby and they're 12 by 12. I like their pillow forms because they're soft. They're very soft. Okay, so we'll then we're gonna do the other side. Poke it down into the corners. This little cover fits really nicely, so. Okay, and then get the sides all beautiful. So we don't have any wrinkles in there. So I wonder if Tim will come back and talk to you before we all leave. So we got our pillow done here. Not sure where he went. All right, what do you think, guys? There's our fall pillow. Now I've got two fall pillows. Aren't those pretty? I like, this is a nice size. Not too big. And these are 12 by 12. So what do you think? How do you do? Is everybody excited about making their own? Okay, Tim, I think we're done. You're going to come back and say goodbye? What's that? You're going to come back and say goodbye? I can. Okay, just a second. Let me switch this back over. I will switch the camera over so Tim can say goodbye to everybody. All right. Got to get the right. There we go. All right. Turn this around. All right. Hey, thanks again for joining us. Um, like Jan said, we won't be back next week. So everybody have a happy and safe uh, Thanksgiving. Keep an eye out for the uh, Black Friday, Small Business Saturday sales. And uh, yeah, can't wait to see you come in. I know we got some classes coming up in December yep. at the first part. So uh, we will see you in a couple weeks. Thanks, Bye, everybody. everybody. Thank you. Have a good day. <laughs>